I wonder in relation to the book, if either of you really could share any best practices for designing and decision-making with permaculture. Well, I suppose I would start with the self audit and that first level of organization in which we live the household of looking at what's the inputs outputs for us look, standing back and and looking in a system sense at ourselves at the things that are sort of in a sense so obvious that we often just take them for granted and that that's the the basis of of being able to see how some design emergence uh, may come from that. I suppose I'd start with that simple. See, because I've worked so much in countries where the culture is highly, highly collective and communal, and where people talk about themselves as we, we were living in this place and we in this village and we in this town, I've come to realise it's going to be the group that seems to me the the area we, we discuss and that we need to move from me to we quite quickly to get the bigger impact so that, yes, individually, it's up to us to live it and model it. However, in the Blue Mountains, we're starting to have a big impact on local government, which is our bioregion. We've got six or eight permaculturists on staff. They're starting a planetary health institute and they're going to make our local government area, the bioregion, ask everyone to practice what are essentially permaculture practices as a living laboratory of planetary health institute. Now, I rather love that. They'll all do it a bit differently, but it makes the bioregion the unit of design, unit of biodiversity, the unit of buffering climate and preparing for disaster, and the unit for meeting its own needs, because it's very difficult for an individual to do that. This approach appeals very much to people in Asia, in the Middle East and Africa, who get a great joy from working together and talking about we. And to some extent, it's starting to come in some of our Western countries, while others retreat <laughs> to their screens and their flats and their studies. But in many places, there's a whole um, sense of accomplishment that spreads out quickly and upscales quickly when people are meeting at the school gate, at the, you know, at the doctor's surgery, wherever they are, they're able to discuss. So we're looking for a bioregional take up of we at the moment. So in terms of design, we would be hoping that people would learn how to do a sector analysis for our bioregion, how we'd be able to do a social sector analysis of what's destroying our bioregion. What's the money coming in? What's the drainage? What's going out? What do we need to strengthen? What can we assist people reach their strengths and responsibilities? So for my way of thinking at the moment, if we can work in our local government areas, because they're often responsive, they're easier to reach than big government. Or if you don't have government, and some places don't, people get going village by village. So I, I think it, we have to walk the talk. It's fun living an ethical life. I'm very, very keen on us going to this social unit for us to move to, to scale up and broaden and strengthen permaculture as restorative. And restoration fundamentally means meeting our needs, but also restoring our biodiversity, keeping our waters clean, building our soils, because without those we can't live and meeting our needs. That's great. Oh, I love it. 